Hades in ancient Greek mythology is the god of the underworld and the name of the realm of the deceased itself. The entrance to this realm, according to Homer and other sources, is said to be located in the far west, beyond the ocean river, which encircles the earth. He is the eldest son of Cronus and Rhea and the sibling of Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Hestia, and Demeter. Hades is also the husband of Persephone, and he is both revered and invoked alongside her. According to Hesiod, when Hades was born, his father swallowed him, a fate shared by all his siblings. However, according to Hoginus, he was cast into Tartarus by his father. Following the division of the world among the three brothers, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, after their victory over the Titans, Hades inherited rulership over the underworld and dominion over the shades of the deceased. Hades was regarded as the deity of subterranean wealth and fertility, bestowing bountiful harvests from the depths of the earth. In Homer's accounts, Hades himself guards the gates to his kingdom, and black bulls were often sacrificed to him. Despite his fearsome role as the god of death, Homer refers to Hades as generous and hospitable since no mortal can escape their inevitable fate. In the Olympian period of Greek mythology, Hades is considered a minor deity. As the god of death, Hades was a fearsome figure, and his name was often avoided, replaced with various euphemistic epithets. One of these epithets, Pluto, came into common use starting in the 5th century and eventually supplanted the original name used exclusively by Homer. This transformation led to Hades absorbing the attributes of Plutos, who was initially an independent deity associated with wealth and fertility. This integration, along with the name change, softened the image of Hades, making him less grim and unyielding. It's possible that under the influence of the Eleusinian mysteries, Hades began to be associated with fertility, drawing a mystical and allegorical parallel between the fate of a grain seed, buried during sowing only to be reborn as a new life in the ear, and the afterlife journey of humans. Discover the enchanting world of myths. Click subscribe to join our mythology channel on YouTube. Unearth ancient legends, unravel mysteries, and embark on epic journeys through the realms of mythology. Don't miss out on a single tale, subscribe now and let the myths come alive on your screen. Chronicles of the Past What are the identifying symbols of the god Hades? He is seated in the central chamber of his palace, occupying a lavish throne crafted from pure gold. Nearby, his perennially melancholic and strikingly beautiful wife, Persephone, keeps him company. According to legend, this opulent throne was meticulously fashioned by Hephaestus, the god of blacksmithing, renowned for his craftsmanship. Speaking of Hephaestus, you can find a comprehensive review of the Forge Master on our channel by following the link above, and don't forget to subscribe. Hades is encircled by the menacing hissing figures of the Erini, goddesses of vengeance, clandestine torment, and suffering. None can evade their reach, they can effortlessly subject any individual to excruciating torment. Given Hades' dominion over the underworld of the deceased, he was often portrayed with his face turned away. This artistic detail underscores his avoidance of direct eye contact, his gaze is empty, lifeless. Another obligatory attribute of Hades is his enchanted helmet. Various legends speak of Hades' magical cap, helmet, which possessed the extraordinary ability to render its wearer invisible. The Cyclopes gifted it to him in gratitude for his role in their liberation, as per Zeus' directive. This helm was also utilized by Zeus during his battle with the Titans, Perseus when he slew the Gorgon Medusa, Athena when she assisted Diomedes against Teres, enabling him to remain incognito. The god is never depicted without his all-powerful weapon, a bident, a two-pronged pitchfork. His scepter is adorned with an effigy of a three-headed dog. Hades traverses his domain in a chariot drawn by steeds as black as the night. Naturally, the earth and the dust that envelop human bodies into their depths represent the element of the god of the dead. While tulips symbolize Hades, and in ancient Greece, black bulls were offered as sacrifices to him. Mysterious Hades is counted among the Olympian gods, even though he predominantly resided within his subterranean domain. 
he ascended to the surface only for matters of importance or when he found himself irresistibly drawn to a new love interest. Hades ruled alongside his wife Persephone, who happened to be the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. He abducted Persephone while she was plucking flowers in a meadow. In this daring act, he appeared at the reins of a team of four horses. Persephone's mother, Demeter, the goddess of earthly fertility, became consumed by sorrow during her quest to find her daughter. In her grief, she neglected her responsibilities, leading to a period of famine on earth. Zeus, noting the dire consequences of Demeter's anguish, commanded that Persephone be returned to her mother. Nevertheless, Hades cunningly compelled Persephone to ingest several pomegranate seeds. This seemingly innocuous sect bound her to the underworld, preventing her from fully departing. Now, she spends only a portion of the year with her mother on the surface, while the remainder of her time is dedicated to reigning in the depths of the underworld. Zeus, in his wisdom, ordained that Persephone would divide her time, with two-thirds spent on earth with her mother and one-third devoted to her role alongside Hades. In the realm of Hades, darkness prevails, and not a single ray of sunlight penetrates its profound depths. The melancholic tranquility of this somber dominion is rarely disturbed by the sounds of the living, instead, the mournful sighs of the deceased fill the entire dungeon with a subdued, indistinct murmur. Here, the number of the deceased surpasses the living on earth an unending stream of souls continually arriving. The sacred river Styx meanders along the borders of the underworld, and upon their demise, souls journey to its shores. There, they patiently and resignedly await the arrival of the ferryman Charon, who will transport them across. Charon embarks upon his boat laden with silent shades, ferrying them to the far bank. He only carries passengers in one direction, his vessel always returns empty. Guarding the entrance to the realm of the departed stands the formidable sentinel, Cerberus, the three-headed, though in some tales, one-headed or two-headed, and with varying interpretations, hound, offspring of the fearsome Typhon, with malevolent serpents hissing and writhing upon his neck. However, his vigilance is more devoted to the exit than the entrance. He promptly permits the souls of the deceased to pass through, but none never returns. Their onward path leads to the throne of Hades. There, congregated before the imposing sovereign, they tremble with trepidation. Persephone, sympathetic to their plight, yearns to offer solace and succor to them all. Yet, her benevolence is futile. Nearby sit the implacable judges, Minos and Radamanthus. They assess the hapless souls on their dreadful scales, immediately revealing the extent of a person's transgressions during life and the fate that awaits them here. For sinners, particularly those who spared no one during their earthly existence, plundering, killing, and tormenting the defenseless, the vengeful goddesses, the Erinnyes, <laughs> offer no respite. They relentlessly pursue criminal souls throughout the underworld, wielding menacing whips, with loathsome serpents writhing atop their heads. Nowhere can sinners hide from them. Roaming the depths of the underworld are also dreadful apparitions, the ghastly Empusa with donkey legs and the monstrous Lamia, who delights in infiltrating children's chambers at night to abduct young ones. Overseeing this eerie assembly is the fearsome goddess Hecate. As night descends, this chilling cohort emerges upon the mortal realm, and woe to anyone who encounters them during this hour. At dawn, they retreat to their gloomy dungeon, waiting until nightfall to venture forth once more. Such is the kingdom of Hades, a realm both dreadful and joyless. According to myths, Hades had a daughter named Macaria, who was the goddess of blessed death. He also had a daughter named Melonia, who was the goddess responsible for bringing nightmares. In addition, there was Zagreia, a god associated with fertility and life, who bestowed the gift of life to people after his heart was consumed by fire. Hades fought on the side of the inhabitants of Pylos and their king Neleus but was wounded by Hercules. The word Pylos is consonant with gate. Due to this, Hades is revered in Pylos, and there is even a temple dedicated to him. According to the Iliad, Hercules wounded Hades in the shoulder, forcing the god to temporarily leave his kingdom and seek healing on Olympus from the god's physician, Pien. <laughs>